And uh, I believe I'm now joined with all the members of the Virginia Walk Band, Ghost of April. What's going on, fellas? How you doing? Doing real good. How are you? Doing good. Hanging in there. All right. Uh, yeah. Before we Our get... Our guitarist is coming. He's getting a drink. Yo. <laughs> He's on his way. Want some code red? No product placement here, Chris. We're live. We're all right. Um, so um, let's let's do a roll call here, so that everyone that's listening knows who's in the us uh, and who's in this call right now. Let's do a roll call. Let everybody know what's your name, what instrument you play, and uh, and all that good stuff. Okay. My name is Amar, and I am vocals. My name's Ian. I'm the guitarist. My name is Tyler. I'm bassist. And Josh, are you done smoking? He's the drummer. <laughs> Josh is the drummer. All right. Um, uh, first and foremost, I thank you all for joining me on the show this evening. Thank you for being on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and get started. And uh, how did the band Ghost of April came about? Well, it started off me and Amar just kind of work. I got a party yeah. we kind of were jamming out we we're like oh that sounds awesome and right. we kind of started pursuing it as an acoustic based project two right. people and we we're like hey that sounds pretty good and so we got more people um josh who actually helped us get the name right um he actually uh, amar always had like you can actually explain your old well i wanted something with with ghost in the name because i, I when i did a solo act i, I that's what i called myself um but so I wanted something with with uh, with the name Ghost in it, <clears throat> and uh, I found out at the time when we were doing the name. Actually, I found out that Ian's grandmother was in the verge of passing, and sadly she passed in in the month of April. And I told my mom about it, and my mom tells me, "Hey, you know your grandmother passed away in April too." With two and two together, and. That's how Ghost of April came together. So we, basically, our grandparents are living through the name, in a nutshell. And uh, I'm sorry to hear about the passing of your family members, and it's good to see that you got this band together, and you got this band name in, in, in their memory, and y'all and y'all making this music, so that's definitely good to know. Yes, sir. That's why the band name <coughs> is, I mean, has a lot of meaning to us, and it means a lot to us. When it when it comes to when it comes to the music, uh, how uh, how would you best describe uh, Ghosts of April's sound? Uh, rock, alternative, or blend of them both? Or what's the best way to describe Ghosts of April's music? Um, best described as alternative metal. We uh we do have our our heavier our heavier metal time, but we still get the groove on alternatively. We even have our uh, softer songs too, so we're kind of all over the place. I think we can um, have any kind of audience. Someone that's ten can listen to us, and I have proof for that. And someone that's in their late sixties can listen to us. So we have a variety for everybody. <clears throat> I think get the demographic as broad as possible. Exactly. Yep. Uh, earlier today, I got a chance to listen to the songs that Amos sent me, and I played all five songs prior to the show getting started, and uh, I enjoy all five songs. Uh, Redemption, Mindless, Hourglass, Saint of Sin, and The Monster Within. Um, great job on the tracks, fellas, and uh, you got yourself a new fan, and I am definitely will be playing more of Ghosts of April in the future. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I'm sure my friend uh, Chaos, who's a, uh, who's heard your music as well, he's probably have y'all music on the music rotation right now as we speak. So uh, definitely, Ghosts of April will be heard on Chillin'. It's definitely gonna be heard on I uh, on ITMI Radio as well. Um, now I'm hearing that you guys are uh, like in a tour going on right now. Y'all got some concerts going on. Very, very local based, but yeah, we're right. just trying to get a 
kind of a lot of shows established so they can kind of get our name out there establish a local fan base and hopefully uh broaden that uh out a little bit yeah we, we uh, for the past this is our first weekend off in like the past what four month. weekends yeah month. Mm-hmm. past month and then uh next weekend we got a show and then the weekend after that we have a show i mean it's not like what you would call a tour where every day you have a show for like nine days have a day off and you're touring the country right we're playing very local to where we are, and uh, it's like a show every weekend. So, yeah, it's a tour, but at the same time, it's not like a major tour. Right. We'll establish ourselves. Yep. What's the reaction y'all been getting from these shows thus far? Amazing. Absolute amazing. Right. People, other bands that we play with come up to us and – just the criticism they give us just overwhelms us. But then at the same time, like everyone that came out to the show fan wise and people that haven't heard us, they're like, wow, new fans. And it's just, when we hear that because we've only right. been doing, we've only had four shows prior to this weekend. Right. And they come up to us and they're like, wow, it, it hits us. And it's very overwhelming and in a good sense. I actually had an experience, uh, was about a week ago, prior to last week's show, I was walking out of Food Lion here in, in our area. It's a grocery store. I was walking out of the store, and um, I mean, it's it was pretty cool here. Someone was blaring our music. I I walked to the, I walked up to the guy. I was like, "Hey, man, what, you know you're listening to my band." He's like, "Who are you?" I was like, "I'm the singer of that band." He's like, "Oh, my girlfriend was at the show and she bought two CDs, and I've been listening to it. It's pretty cool hearing it." Yeah, out of random, just someone blaring the music. I thought I was actually imagining it first. I was like, no, actually, there's someone. <laughs> wow. Now was this? Now was this at a grocery store? Was that your music was played? No, no. no I was that... walking out of the grocery store. Someone passing by the store to go into the store in their car. They were all the way up. They were playing one of our songs. That's definitely have to be a good. Uh, a oh, pretty damn good oh, family. You have, I was on the phone with Josh, and I was telling him, hold on, man, hold on a second. I think, like, dude, I think someone's playing our music. And I, while I'm walking to it, he's like, yeah, dude, that's us. I didn't even know the guy. I, mean, I had to walk to him. I, was like, I have to, I have to. This is like one in the middle. I mean, I won't hear this. We're not signed. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty cool. What, so- what song was it they were playing? They were playing Feel. I don't think I've sent you that song. But they were playing fields on the first CD. All right, so um, back to the um, the concerts real quick. Uh, for a fan who's never had a chance to go to a gate uh, a ghost of a ghost of April concert, what what can they expect? No, we always try to be as professional as possible whenever we play a show. Exactly. And that includes um, audience involvement and everything. We always like to make people feel like they're here to enjoy good music. <coughs> we, we, um, we feed off the crowd, and the crowd feeds off of us. That's uh, something we learn. And um, we're very professional, as we have said. We take not just professional musically. We, equipment that we have is professional. So... We try to make it as professional as possible. Yeah, the way we um, times arrived and everything like that, making sure that the venue can work with us to get our play within our allotted set set times and everything, making sure that we're within their own time constraints and everything. Right. We gotta build a reputation. Exactly. <laughs> we are on time. We are on time. Don't forget it. <laughs> Always. Always on time. Always on time, no doubt about it. Uh, for those who are just tuning in, you are listening to Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C right here on itmyradio.com. I'm joined with all four members of the rock band Ghost of April. You can check out their music on iTunes, Bandcamp, <coughs> other music websites. You can like their fan page on Facebook. Uh, they give you the latest uh, concert dates, the music, and everything. Just be on the lookout for Ghost of April if you are in the Virginia area. Um, who do you guys consider as influences in this band? 
Taylor, why don't you start there? Um, on bass, my influence is uh, Cliff Burton from Metallica, the original bassist. Yeah. Les Claypool. Um, and I'm a more of a guitar player than a bassist, so I've got inspiration from Macedon and a bunch of other progressive metal type bands, but I've got like a jazz feel to it as well. I think it goes without saying, me being a guitarist, uh, Metallica, I mean, that's kind of like them. That's awesome. Uh, David Gilmore, uh, Randy Rose, of course. Zach Wild, Dimebag Daryl, a whole bunch of people in the story. I mean, like bands, um, I mean, obviously alternative bands are a big inspiration to all of us. Like some of the common ones, like Seven Dust Disturbed. I mean, I personally get a lot of enjoyment from the styles of like Il Nino, that Latino style that really just hits hard and fast. Yeah. Basically, I like listening to things that are unique that people haven't heard before, and I really want to bring that out in our music. Right. I have on vocals inspiration. I got inspiration in different genres as well, not just metal. Um, if I had to pick rock music for the rock genre, uh, top three would probably be uh, Alter Bridge, David Draymond from Disturbed, and uh, Le Jean from Seven Dust. Uh, but I, I, my Bright Night is another influence. Usher is another influence. Then uh, for on drums, uh, two biggest influences influences are uh, my dad. I can't uh, I wouldn't be a drummer if it wasn't for him. And then uh, the drummer Matt from August Burns Red. Of course, that style of music's definitely not what we play, but it's amazing and it's it's really what and keeps me going to try to get to because right. he is phenomenal. But um, yes. He there's, inspires there's, you, man. Doesn't look at Usher. I'm not like Usher, Usher, but he inspires me the way man yeah. thinks. You know, he's great. Yep. But yeah, my dad and August Burns Red, my two inspirations. I definitely find it interesting that you have, you have Usher and Brian McKnight as influences. Um, considering y'all walk guys, but. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, is it's music. Is is yeah, exactly. And, and, it's and, music. You gotta feel it. If you think about it, Seven Dust, the way they sing, he puts a lot of soul into his singing, which I do as well. And that's where the R and B influence comes in. But see, like the main difference between like Seven Dust and us is no, no, no offense. He's black. You're white. <laughs> that is different. <laughs> Yeah. Straight. Which is, is ridiculous. Both of them are amazing. I mean, Lejean is, I mean, I told the man in his face, I was like, without you, if you weren't singing, sir, I would not be singing. I said, oh, thanks, man. That means a lot. Like, yeah. He's awesome. I love him. He's great. Uh, what's your take on the music that you hear on the radio these days? Oh, boy. Uh, oh that's, that's, oh, man. You're going to, <laughs> Go into that border. Oh gosh. You know, I'll start with this. Here, here we go. You know, I, I, and I'll do every genre, man. I'm not gonna just go into the pop, hip, top forties. Even rock music today, some of it is <laughs> terrible. I, I don't know anymore, man. I feel like we won't have another Randy Rhodes, and we won't have another Ozzy Osbourne come in for a long time. So, but I'm. Not just because I don't like it, I just don't think today's pop is good. I just think it's too generic, man. The lyrics don't make sense. It, this, this is my opinion. In, in, my, in my opinion, literally, I was a prospective scholar in music. I can sit down in an hour and have any one of any song written for you that sounds just like any one of them on the radio. It's so simple. Like I can tell you simple. that I can tell you. There you go. Like, That's the word. Simple. Like, I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to dog in any of the music, but like Usher's, yeah, three notes. Three notes. Three notes made millions. Right. Just, I mean, yeah, he probably spent a lot of hours in the studio getting his voice. Because I mean, Usher has a great voice. Right. 
and it took a lot of time to produce it because, of course, you got all the different artists on there. Yeah. But I mean, music wise, it's simple. Simple. The lyrics, what what makes the difference is the lyrics, man. The lyrics mm -hmm. are beyond, beyond important. Yeah, that's maybe what like a well, that's maybe like a personal qualm I might have here, but um. Like a lot of the music I, I feel is written today is just written mainly for the demographics that they know are going to sell, which is great for business. Right. But at the same time, you kind of <laughs> sacrifice originality. You're sacrificing originality and creativity. Right. I think the overall goal should be to have both. Right. I mean, if you if you can honestly write something that everyone, mostly everyone, can relate to and appeal to, right. not just say like, oh, three lyric chorus and hey, we're done, make millions. No. Right. No, no. I want to write something that people can like take home a message with like they can live yeah, our experiences too. and make them their own i'd rather have someone tell me hey man your lyrics and your music changed my life than me make fifteen thousand dollars on the song mm -hmm. and that's and that's the honest truth man money is not important yeah it comes with the business that's fine <coughs> it's just part of the business if you can make money you can even crash the main part for the music to me is if i can infect somebody and influence them from what I've done. That's my biggest goal. Precisely. Very, very true. And the money is good, but it's not the most important. No, nope. it really isn't. It truly, honestly is. Like it shouldn't be. And that's why today's top forty is not good because they're all after money. I'm going to write a song that's called Girlfriend. Yeah. And, and sing about. I don't know, man. I just. I don't mind it. I just I wouldn't do it professionally. Let them, let them. It's what they like to do. You know. Of course, it's just a series of utterances, not even words. Right. Right. Noises. <laughs> Lyrics are important. Do you think the the reason that the music is where it's at mostly because maybe the artists don't get enough freedom, or is it like the A and R's record executives telling you to do something that maybe they prefer to do do you think it's the lack of freedom that they get through their music because at the end of the day it's their music and if they want it's what they want it to sound like do you think the reason for the music sounding the way it is is because of i don't know lack of freedom from the artists themselves it's it's kind of the lack of freedom but um it's mostly someone going out saying hey you got a great voice I got a piece of music that I want your great voice on. Right. And they're like, oh, as long as it's my voice, why not? Yeah, well, yep. And it's like his okay. their dream is to sing. Mm -hmm. They're they're not they're not truly like musicians. They are singers. Right. That they go to a studio and a producer writes the music. And then it gets produced. And their voice is on the track. And then boom. Now their name it's famous because of their voice. Most of the time, I don't think it's truly, I don't think they truly care as long as it's, oh, it's my voice. Right. It's my lyrics mm -hmm. that are like getting out the there. Music is, it's like that. <coughs> yeah, because of that. Yeah. And it's, that's the main difference between like pop mainstream media music and the difference between like mainstream rock. And like country, Nickelback, and Nickelback, Nickelback country too. Like Nickelback mm. and, and country artists, right? Work freaking long hours right. to write a song. Right. Sitting in the studio, spends an hour writing the music, then they spend three hours putting the voice on it, and they spend another two hours producing the entire song, and then boop, that one song that they just produced in one day is now multi-million dollar song. Mm -hmm. Versus the country and rock artists, they spent two days three days on one song and now they gotta write twelve more for C D because that's how they have to sell music is as a CD and not as a song. Like this like first and I'm not trying to put the kid on the spot, like the first album of Justin Bieber, yes, was definitely generic because they told him what to sing. He sold seven million copies of that C D. He has the freedom to do what he wants. But he went and did Boyfriend. And that's definitely him. He had the freedom to do what he wanted to say. He knows they can sell money. The A and R people, his managers know that he can sell it. So. Again, I'm joined with uh, Walk Band Ghost of April right here on the channel with Jeff and Kenny C. Um, other than the concerts, 
Uh, do you have any new music in the works? Yes. Oh yeah, yes, we do. <laughs> yep. And if if you thought the first two EPs blew your mind, oh, I don't even know what's coming. Oh yeah, don't even know. Because now, because now that uh, now that all four of us are getting our minds geared up and for this 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 new songs that we're writing, it's becoming so much more than what we even thought it would ever be. Nice. Still keeping with the same basis that we were writing before, nice. but oh my god, totally another level. We stepped up a little bit. Yeah. We stepped up a little bit. Makes we like to think so. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all hear them. Y'all, y'all, when y'all hear them, that's on that. Right. You definitely can hear that and many more on the Facebook fan page, uh, Ghosts of April, the name of the band. Uh, you can check them out in the Virginia area. The dates, the days and times are posted on there. Uh, and they do shows on Blog TV as well. So, you know, just keep an eye on that Facebook fan page for more info on Ghost of April. And, fellas, I want to say thank you for joining me on the show. And uh, before I let you go, um, I have a comment in the room from my friend Andrew, who's he listens to rock music as well, and he says that he hopes y'all do very well in, in what y'all do. Uh, keep up the good work. That's from thank my you, thank you, thank you, thank you, much appreciated. And, and again, uh, y- y'all music is great. Y'all have a bright future, and. Uh, Heck, man, get let's put y'all on, on the mainstream radio. Put y'all on the mainstream that's, chart. That's, 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 that's 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 nice, man. That's let's go. Goal. That's the goal, man. <laughs> oh, I and, and again, check them out on Facebook. Uh, again, thank you all for your time. Best of success goes out to the band going forward. And again, thank you all four of you for being on. Thank, thank you. you for thank you. You all have a good night. You, you too, Eric. All right, bye-bye. That was Ghost of April.